All right, we are about to start. Brothers and sisters, welcome to our service for May 5th, Sunday, May 5, 2019. This is the Sunday service. I am Idika Imeri, and um, I want to really appreciate you coming to join us during this worship and its broadcast to all of our partners and friends and new people around the world. So which country, whichever country you are, and you are watching this program, thank you very much, you're welcome. I will want to invite you to participate in giving so that this program will continue to be in the air. We come to worship God who exists as family, as God the Father, Christ the King, and Holy Spirit, our leader, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made the heavens and the earth. Lord, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. We plead the blood of your dear son to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We receive every good thing that you, Jesus, you have made available for us through your great emancipation by becoming the sacrifice on our behalf. We receive back everything that comes from that. We also participate in you, in knowing you, in being constantly with you, and in the power of your resurrection. Today, O oh God, honor all the Christian mothers and fathers who have saved you in a big or small way. We join the angels to worship you and to adore you. We also ask you to give us the gift of so that we will be able, O oh Father, to achieve greatness upon the earth for you, for ourselves, and for our brothers and sisters. We ask all of this in the name of him who died for us, who loves us and cares so much about us, and who has made life abundantly and release it to us even our King, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. And amen. Let us hear the reading from Genesis. And shortly after that, we will hear the gospel for today. Please announce where you are reading and read it loud and clear to us. We, the world community, we are listening to you. As I go and take my seat. Okay, we are reading from Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. Then the Lord appeared to him by the cherubim trees of memory, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So 
he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground, and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please, let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by, inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, Do as you said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Amen. This is the Amen. word this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and hear the gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear ye the gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah. The gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 14, from verse 14 to 21. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves virtues. And Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were fed and were filled and they took up the fragment about the fragment that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children. That ends the gospel for tonight. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Some years ago, I began a series called The Gift of Sensitivity. The Holy Spirit has anointed me the Father has anointed me with the Holy Ghost to continue to minister along this area. There are so many themes or topics that have been started, but have not yet been completed because they are so vast.
what God will use to separate you from other human beings. Many a times it's not going to be your education, your color, your race, your professional training or vocational training. Many a times it's not going to be your experiences in life or what you have put down for yourself in your resume or your curriculum vita. What God is going to use to set you aside for great things, for favor, for reward and mighty compensation. And many a times what is going to describe your destiny and what is going to describe how or the impact you are going to make in human history globally is going to come from what is natural in you. Many a times it's not just the supernatural gift that is alive in us, that is working in us powerfully, but many a times is going to be what is in your character. What is it that is in your person? There are certain things that you do not need any human being to push you, to drag you, to beat you up, fight you, constantly remind you before you say it or before you do it. Your blessing, your destiny many a times is going to be changed or is going to be expanded, or is going to be introduced into the world. And many a times, all that you are going to be, the, the way God is going to look at you forever, for all of time and eternity, is because you were a sensitive person. I watch how people give me gifts. And that tells me a lot about whether they honor me as a person or not. In America, people give to a project, to a cause, to a particular thing, or a church, a ministry, a public charity or foundation. That is one thing. But go and find out. Do people give to me as a person. I can count how many people around the world who are sensitive to my needs. There are some people who want to call me first before they, they want to buy me stuff. And yet there are others who truly understands and know exactly what my needs are. Abraham did not need to find out who those men were. Where are they going? So what he was doing was, people will say, oh, he was just doing it because they were angels. God might have informed Abraham or God might have moved Abraham's heart or mind or spirit or as a spirit to spirit to let him know that oh, that was God coming to him in form of those three angels. Absolute rubbish. Abraham fed these men, refreshed them, make sure that they kept away from the heat of the day. He provided them safety, covering, food, refreshment, cool off. He gave them the best that he had, whether they were angels or not.
the best thing that will come to you will not come because of your fasting or your prayer or your religiosity or your political affiliation or your race or color or that you were either cursed or blessed in the past or in the present. That's not it. It is what comes out of you. You were sensitive to something, to a person. You were sensitive to a person. We are not talking about God here. Because for some people, they want to be sensitive to God, but they do not want to be sensitive to a human being that God has sent to you. Who has God sent to you for you to be sensitive about and minister to that person's needs? Abigail was sensitive to the needs of David and his men. I will go there. Joseph was sensitive to the needs of a pharaoh. Esther was sensitive to the need of a king. Joshua was sensitive to the need of Moses. Elisha was sensitive to the need of Elijah. It goes on and on and on and on. Who are you sensitive to? I'm learning Spanish now. Why? Because I know where America is going. In the next five, ten years, this will be a totally different country. Forget about what the politicians are saying. Because politicians are like buffaloes. Scare them, they all scatter. Abraham showed who he really was by taking care of the needs of three men who turn out to be God passing by. Ha <laughs> ha! Are you aware that God is passing you by every day? And what are you doing about it? Money, money is passing you by. Skills passing you by. Investments passing you by. And you are sitting there crying over what you don't have. Crying over what didn't turn out your way. I want it to be said at the end, God did it for me. But I also want it to be said that there were certain people who were sensitive to what my needs are. How you know whether someone is sensitive to you or whether somebody just wanna use you. Look at what they buy for you. I'm not interested in people who talk to me. I'm interested in people who cares about what my needs are. And that's just what it is. Many of you thought that Jesus was always with the 12 disciples or the three disciples. That's not true. 90% of Jesus' time was spent with people who really cared about him. They were not his disciples, none of them. They were with Mary Magdalene, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, the man who owned the upper room, the Cleopas, different, 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 different people. People of high esteem. People who cared about him. Never spend any of your time with anyone who doesn't care about you, who, doesn't, who is not sensitive to your needs. Oh, other people might be taking care of him. Aha, uh -huh. so nobody take care of any, anything.
Many people think that I'm making a whole lot of money. That's, that's a lie. There are certain months that we don't receive one donation from anybody. There are months that I don't receive any gift from anybody. If not that I'm a good manager of our money, we, we would have been broke a long time ago. Because there's a lot of people who want things for free. Right now, during this month of May, June, July, August, September, I'm saddled with a lot of students who want to go to school from different countries of the world. I don't have the money to, to give to all of them. So if you want to help out shipping, that'll be fine. All I tell you is don't borrow money to send to our ministry or to send to me. I don't want that. What are you sensitive about? Is your husband sensitive about your needs? Financially, emotionally, and intellectually, material resources. Who is sensitive about what you truly need? Your investments in life. Is your wife sensitive to you? Are your children sensitive to your need that you need help? Many of you want to do everything for your children. But I can assure you that it's a sin against God for you to try to do everything for your child. Wash their, do their laundry, do the dishes, cook the food, mow the lawn. That's a sin against God and a sin against the universe. Because you need to give your children opportunity for them also to help you. When will they grow up? When will they be of help to you? Abraham jumped in and did the right thing. He didn't care whether they were angels or not. He didn't even know they were angels. I've been asking for people to donate for us to buy our mission house. In some places, when such an announcement is made, you'll see people take up one more job. You see people take up one more job, they will go and do different things and raise money. That's what I do. What are you sensitive about? At the end of the day, people are interested in themselves and their children and their little families. And they give God and they will give God little, a little bit. There are many of you that I want to thanks, but I don't want to, I do not want to provoke any jealousy. So normally I do those things secretly. See, until you become sensitive to somebody's need, somebody that you really care about, All your religion will be nothing. Jesus cared so much about the people who were listening to him. He's been teaching them. And the disciples said, send them away. Let them go and buy their own food. He said, no, 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 no. What strength will they have to travel? What do you have? You will always have to give God something to place on the altar. Whether you like it or not, that's the way the law is. You can't change it for all of life and eternity. God always wants you to put something on the altar for exchange for what you want. If he doesn't give it to you right away, wait. It will come to pass. Many things I'm supposed to receive from God, he can't give it to me now. Why? This place cannot accommodate what is coming. Until I move out of here, then my riches will blow up. And many of you are the same way. So that's why I'm trying to find different ways of raising money so that when people don't give, I can go ahead. 
leave everyone behind and move on. That's the way you do it. Because there are people who want to wait for the finished program, for the finished package, then they come and join and sweet talk themselves into it. Jesus made the provision. He created the miracle when they brought the food and the, when they brought the bread and the fish. God is not going to create any miracle for you until you are sensitive to what God needs and to what another human being that God has brought to you for you to care for needs. It's not every human being. You have to do this. It's not the homeless people out there. That's not what we are talking about for you to give them five bucks. No, we are talking about something serious. Eternal Father, make us sensitive from the depth of our belly, the seat of spirit, Make us sensitive to act immediately without delay concerning things that we should do immediately. That will become the reason why you love us forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 So don't think... Amen. Don't think that God is going to love you because of Jesus has paid the price. No. He's looking at what price you're willing to pay. That's what the gift of sensitivity is about. What price are you willing to pay? See what Abraham presented to them to eat. The best of the best. If you are always thinking about getting broke, You'll be broke forever. You'll never be rich. <laughs>